Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. Today is all about the Union Orbat 3.07 in which they can field a very aerial heavy force. As a small disclaimer though, this uh, video is made with the 3.07 Beta Orbat, which was all that was available at time of recording, so if there's any small changes in the future, you'll know why. Now 3.07 was made because the Destiny class flagship was added to the roster and uh, yeah, it will be discussed in this uh, video as well. But first, let's take a look at uh, all of the rules that were updated both in 3.06 and 3.07 because my last deep dive was uh, one for 3.05. A big new rule that they have gained is Air Razor Munitions and uh, this is mostly important for the aerial units because when making attacks with the broadside quality against aerial units, this unit gains the sustained aerial units quality. So you have to shoot at aerial units and then your broadsides will also get sustained. Which is quite good because as you'll see, most of the new aerial uh, blimps have got this rule. Another thing that got added in this Orbat, but doesn't really have anything to do with aerial units, mind you, but I am including it because it covers the 3.07 Orbat update in general, is the deep dive rule. It is something that uh, these uh, submerged units can now do. In the special operations phase of the round, while battle ready and in open water, the unit can go into a deep dive. For the remainder of that round, the only thing the unit does movement wise is double its drift movement and cannot make any other movements uh, whatsoever. The unit also cannot launch any SRS tokens, should it have uh, that rule as well, or make any actions that does not have the submerged quality. Now you have to remember, attacks are actions, so you can only shoot with things like torpedoes for instance. Furthermore, while it carries out the deep dive special operation, this unit cannot be the initial target of any action that does not always ha also have the submerged quality. So there's a big downside, a limitation to what you can do, but there is also a big limitation on what your opponent can do against your submarines, so that's pretty neat. A unit cannot be part of an attached unit if it carries out a deep dive special operation unless both units have this role. <laughs> you can't have one you know, submerged unit going deep if the other isn't also designed for it, in other words, which makes total sense. A unit can it cannot carry out a deep dive special action if it has already done so in the previous round. So there's no cheesing it and staying in a deep dive, uh, you know, for the rest of the round, there's no option to do so. Um, yeah, pretty neat update for submarines as well. Give em Hell was also slightly tweaked. Give em Hell generally gives the devastating quality to uh, any of the uh, uh, gunnery, broadsides or fusillade attacks that they can do for the Union, of course, um, and it's been clarified that this also applies when making a crossing the T action. Small little update, but a welcome one, even though crossing the T is not that big of a thing, because most of the unit's weapons are front-mounted anyway, with a frontal uh, 270 degree arc, so crossing the T, a bit of a, a, you know, an edge case, but it's updated. One thing that got significantly better in these uh, updates is the Sentinel Generator. Uh, a model with this generator, or any model within 5 inch, may remove two action dice from any attacks against it, so it's irrespective of mass. So if you've got a mass 1 target close by to a Sentinel, um, or right, a mass 1 unit close by to a Sentinel uh, Shield Generator, it's going to get that protection, which is uh, pretty neat. The generator cannot be used by enemy models or models with a shield generator or against attack actions with uh, submerged arc or bomb qualities, so very similar to a shield generator in general, and it doesn't stack with the traditional shield generator, which also makes sense for the balance, of course. Now what has changed, though, is that it also clearly states that it cannot be used uh, in conjunction with the obscured rules. Um, and yeah, you cannot remove more than two dice in total uh, from an attack. The big deal now is though that uh, sentinel generators can be used in the shooting phase to make an attack in the four arc against an initial target using the heat lance weapon's crippled profile, which is still a quite strong attack because a heat lance is a pretty solid weapon as we'll see in a bit. As a Valor effect, all the Sentinel Generators may be used with the Battle Ready profile instead of uh, the Crippled profile, so you can actually buff it if you've got bigger units equipped with uh, Sentinel Generators, which, uh, which are the Sentinel uh, airships as well, so big buff there. And as a second big buff, models with a Mass 3 or larger will always use that Battle Ready Heat Lance profile, so your Mass 3 ships with this one have gotten better as well. 
So pretty good news for uh, the Honorable Eclipse Company, their custodian has gotten quite a bit better. There's also a small tweak to Pacifier Assault, uh, because, uh, well, it's a bit of a nerf, you can not use it against submerged initial targets, uh, but you can against aerials. It's being discussed, but we'll see if that, uh, that holds out to the final beta. Like I said, this is uh, still, uh, or final version, I should say, this is still a beta version. And then finally, uh, Maritime Patrol got uh, updated, also big for uh, Union airships, especially those of the uh, Honorable Eclipse Company, because do they both have this rule. Maritime Patrol now blocks enemy units with the Submarauder rule to be deployed within 10 inch of this model. Now the actual flying units themselves usually cannot be charged by uh, submarauders because, uh, well, they're aerial units and most submarauders are not, they're submarines. So, um, this is definitely a good way to protect your ships even more so. So, that uh, protective bubble that we'll see when we're discussing these ships has just gotten even better. In addition, you'll still be shooting at deep diving uh, submarines regardless of what happens. So that is uh, yeah, a very good anti-submarine quality and anti-submarauder rule. And uh, yeah, we'll see that on two of these uh, aerial units as well. Another option now is the field repair platform. Um, which comes on the Big Destiny class. Roll an action die each time a friendly Mass 1 model with the aerial unit trait is destroyed within 7 inch of this unit. These are now Mass 1 models. The Imperium has a similar rule and I imagine that they'll follow suit as well uh, to only affect Mass 1 models. On the roll of a counter or a heavy counter, the model is not removed and instead remains in play with a single hull point. That can make it absolutely obnoxious if you have to whittle away larger units of Mass 1 ships. I do something very similar with my Scandinavian ones, and that makes targeting my Valkyrie Hunt Rotors in that force an absolute nightmare, so it's very nice to see that this ability is now also copied to the Union. And then one rule that is more of a refresher is the HEC contractor rule, because uh, while well, the HEC is the Honorable Eclipse Company, uh, one of the more important elements in the aerial force for the Union, and I'll explain why in a bit. This model adds plus two defense action dice pull to any friendly model within five inch, and this bonus is in addition to any other bonuses such as being part of an attached unit, etc. The HEC contractor rule only applies though during each round where the force of this unit is part of had equal or less victory points than their opponents at the most recent check for victory step, which means this will only ever kick in in turn two, and you'd have to be behind in points to do so. However, we all know that you can be behind in victory points rather cheekily by including a patron. And speaking of a patron, Silas Hodge is still here, he's the Executive General of the Honourable Eclipse. He only sets you back one victory point, but again, that is enough to sort of make sure that you can be behind in victory points, unless of course your opponent is using a more expensive patron in his force. The Honourable Eclipse Company battle fleets are main battle fleets rather than specialist battle fleets in a force with the Executive General as its patron. Furthermore, there is no limit on the number of Honourable Eclipse Company battle fleets included in that force. And why am I starting off with the patrons? That's always a bit odd. But if you take this one, the HEC Company battle fleet becomes a main battle fleet, which means that it can then be backed up by Union aerial battle fleets, which are specialist battle fleets. And that means that you can pretty much have a full aerial force with the Union through the Honorable Eclipse Company, should you so desire. Now, if this remains the case for the finalized version, we'll see, but you'll definitely be able to vet, get a very aerial heavy force, at least, if you go this route. The HEC Company Battle Fleet was not really tweaked all that much. It now says that you can have Custodian class or Excelsior class uh, flagships. And uh, the flagship units can only consist of a single model. Um, that is a thing now, that they can be taken in units. Sometimes that good, that's good. Sometimes, you know, why bother? But, you know, if you're taking them as a flagship unit, you can only include the one for it instead of units of them. And when it comes to the Union Aerial Battle Fleet, it now, of course, has the Destiny class in there. It's not in blue because it was a bit of an Easter egg already in the previous uh, Orbat. And uh, yeah, if you take them to boost your Honorable Eclipse Company, hey, full air unit, always fun. 
Now in terms of weapon options, not a lot has changed for the Union. Uh, the big thing is of course that the Heatland got added. Um, that's only because of the Sentinel generator, mind you. You're not getting use of uh, heat lances um, that you may have uh, via Alliance units if you are heavy into Susas. Uh, so don't go expecting crazy things there. In terms of stats, the only weapon that really was boosted is the dual magnetic Gatling gun, but it has been boosted significantly in its leading value, making it a 9-4 weapon, which means that units equipped with uh, dual magnetic Gatling guns might now actually be better off to just shoot at your opponent with uh, the uh, single shots, really. Um, it's always an option to just dwindle away your opponent's hull points through that and seeing as you can uh, quite easily spam them as well uh, although less so when we're talking about the RC-52s they have become more expensive because of it it's still a very reliable way to chip away uh, hull points and with Magnetic you're pretty sure that he'll be getting at least one debuff marker so why not? And that covers most of the special rules and uh, weapons, etc. Let's take a look at the flagship units you have available for them. And for this video review, I've uh, divided them up into aerial flagships for the HEC battle fleet and the ones for the Union uh, battle fleet. The HEC ones do have an option, this one, the Excelsior Heavy Air Cruiser, that has the Union trait, but again, it can be taken in there. It will just lose that Union trait and gain the HEC and, of course, the HEC contractor rule as well. Now, the Excelsior Heavy Air Cruiser, let's start by discussing this one. This is the one that I like the least of the two, to be honest. First of all, it's more expensive. It comes with a heavy gun battery um, on there and uh, two Anaheim Auto Cannons. Now, in and of itself, not bad weapons, of course, and you can boost them a bit through focused gunnery, but overall, not a very impressive amount of firepower from a 246 point unit. Um, it does have Vanguard so it can get into uh, close range quite quickly and nowadays all of these blimps do have heavy broadsides so you can put them to good use quite quickly but it's still not my favorite unit because all of what I'm saying about broadsides can also be applied to the custodian sentry air cruiser. Mind you, for flagships, they are pretty fast. I mean, if they're drifting 3-inch and moving 8, uh, these things can get into a range rather quickly to start putting those uh, close, co uh, close quarters Anaheim auto cannons to good use and those heavy broadsides, so it's not a completely lost cause of a unit. It's just that the Custodian Sentry Air Cruiser with a new and updated uh, Sentinel generator gives it a... Or might as well just say heat lance here. Um, as an extra weapon system and uh, you know heat lance versus heavy gun battery into Anaheim auto cans not entirely sure if that's that much worse in addition it does have a freedom incendiary bomb less that's definitely a thing but flying over units to then use those freedom incendiary bombs is something that is only very applicable in the late game um, so it's it's not the worst thing to lose definitely not if you consider that you gain all of the benefits from that sentry generator with the two dice less for all the mass one air, uh, units around you etc so um, yeah my preference personally is the custodian sentry air cruiser now the reason why I like that Custodian as well is because it stacks so well with the Destiny Sky Fortress. Uh, the Destiny Sky Fortress clocks in at 360 points and is a completely new option. It also comes with uh, dual magnetic Gatling guns, one in each uh, front end, because the Destiny has like two different uh, Mass 3 uh, balloons glued together with a central decking if you've seen the other videos I've made about it. And if you haven't yet, definitely check out the channel and the rest of it because I do quite a lot of uh, Dystopian Wars content if you're interested, so definitely subscribe. And if you like this type of video, definitely click the thumbs up as well, it helps with the channel. And if you are already subscribed, remember you are awesome and thank you very much. Now about the Destiny Sky Fortress and why I like it in tandem with the Custodian is because this one has that uh, field repair platform. Uh, Bogota Carrioles were buffed as well, as we'll discuss later on. They're much cheaper for what they do now. And uh, if a Bogota is both buffed by the field repair platform and a sentry generator, um, a sentinel generator, sorry, you're going to have a very hard time getting through those mass one units and their firepower isn't anything to be sneezed at these days either. And speaking of those Bogota 
carryalls, you can actually include a unit of pre preferably five of them uh, nowadays in the faction if it includes the Destiny Sky Fortress unit. Um, you do still have to pay points for it, obviously, um, but it just you know can be included as a bit of an extra freebie for the aerial force as well and uh, it can deploy immediately together with the carryall rotors or a concentry rotors within five inch of it if it wants to but i think the real strength of it is if you're combining it with the bogatus now the destiny sky fortress is a very expensive ship for 360 points especially when you look at the toughness it has uh, but that's because it brings a lot to the table both in amount of firepower because you're getting two aerial torpedo salvos twice the dual magnetic gatling gun which is a nice amount of firepower four rocket batteries which is also pretty awesome and then three heavy broadsides to each side which means that yeah you do want to get close to the enemy with this ship which sort of is uh, a bit of a contradiction because it's also a carrier uh, it has a SRS capacity of 8.4 and can do all the other carrier things such as SRS mine clearance and SRS recon uh, and usually you want to hang back with carriers so they don't get shot up but uh, well, that's not really the case for the Destiny Sky Fortress because well you're an aerial unit it's near impossible to hide so you'll want to get close in with the enemy it's not easy to do with this one though because it might have mass 5 but it also has the lumbering rule limiting the drift to only 3 inches and then its speed of 6 isn't exactly fast enough to keep up with some of the other units you'll find in here. So you can castle up very very well in turn 1 if you want to especially with a custodian but you'll be hard pressed to keep that up for the entire duration of the game. Now speaking of castling up, by the way, uh, the Custodian and the Destiny Sky Fortress both have Flak Barrage 10, which means that you can shoot at incoming SRS um, for every exploding hit that you roll, for the 20 dice that you would have then, uh, you can remove one SRS token, which makes them being taken over by enemy SRS quite difficult as well. And in general, a US uh, aerial heavy fleet with a lot of blimps is going to be shooting down opposing SRS tokens left, right and center. So I'm not going to repeat this every single time, but they have a lot of flag barrage options. Now the second option that you can get for a, a Union air fleet is the Venture Assault air cruiser for 240 points and of course the Excelsior that I have discussed earlier but I'm not going to do that twice. The Venture Assault air cruiser is an interesting one because it uh, it also comes with the two heavy broadsides, the two, two uh, rocket batteries and the dual magnetic gatling guns along with the aerial torpedo. It only clocks in at 240 points mind you. And it has the unexpected arrival rule, which I've included here in the bottom left, which means it can turn up pretty much anywhere at the tail end of turn two, of course, uh, because, uh, well, in turn one, it showing up requires that very lucky exploding uh, six, you know, um, that exploding hit. Uh, but yeah, in general, you can plonk it pretty much anywhere, and that's bound to be useful if it's also got the landing vessel rule, which it happens to have. So yeah, this might just be a very interesting unit in the very near future. But until then, the Destiny is, in my opinion, the cooler looking model and the most ubiquitously usable of the two. But the Venture Assault Air Cruiser definitely is something you should keep in the back of your mind because I rate it slightly better than the Excelsior. In addition, the Venture Assault Air Cruiser also has the Minutemen Assault Base, so you can do an assault after the deep striking, uh, in which it doesn't need to fear uh, a counter assault result. So that's always sort of like, hey, try it, it might as well work. And to make things even scarier, you can take them into squadrons of two, two models, one additional model, at a cost of 240 points each. So definitely, if that landing vessel and unexpected arrival rule turns out to be very good in the new uh, uh, Admiral's Handbook, yeah, you're going to look at a very interesting entry. Now, of course, flagships are all well and good, but you need something to flesh out the rest of your force. So let's have a look at the normal aerial units. The first one is one that I've mentioned a few times already, and those are the Bogota Carryall Rotors. I'm not entirely sure if I'm saying that word correctly. Uh, this is based on a, a place name, a city or a town, if I'm not mistaken, in the US, and I'm never quite sure how to pronounce those, so uh, yeah. But they are now only 30 points each, and they have been given a third hull point. 
they are still only armor 4 and Citadel 10, mind you, but I've already talked about how it can be quite a nightmarish unit to have to shoot down, because uh, a reliable way of doing it is with single shots. And the single shots can really be dampened quite a bit uh, by using the, uh, the Sentinel generator. And in addition, you can then have that one thing where if you shoot a big volley at them to aim for Citadel 10, perfectly possible, it might lead to nothing if there is a repair platform nearby. So I think this is one unit that really benefits from that tandem of a destiny along with uh, the Custodian. And when it comes to firepower, with the Anaheim Otto Cannon and an aerial torpedo pod, it does have enough firepower of its own to, uh, you know, for 150 points you can get a unit of 5 of them. It's a decent amount of output for a unit that only costs that many points. The weapons are perhaps a bit short ranged, but Vanguard really does help out there, and Vanguard is very good in a couple of scenarios where you can uh, start scoring very early victory points if you want to. Uh, gotta make sure that you don't screw yourself over though with your HEC contractor rule by taking a very early lead. But then again, I would prefer the lead over the HEC contractor rule. In addition, you will probably be swimming in these models because you get one for every aerial uh, sprue that you pick up and uh, it's very easy to get them because, uh, let's be honest, with the Destiny providing eight of these sprues uh, and then the option of buying the Honorable Eclipse Company box, which is I believe five of them, and then five of these sprues being included in Fortune and Glory, there's a good chance that you've got, you know, maybe up to 18 of these already. But they are quite flexible though, you do not have to take them with aerial torpedo pods all the time. You can either have them as fuel tanks holding the lamp lighter napalm for the aft fire arc. Not exactly something that I find too enticing because, well, then you're sort of stuck with that aft arc thingy. Um, but more interesting, you can have container payloads giving it the supply depot rule for some additional uh, utility or, and this one has caught my attention, troop transport payloads giving it the landing vessel rule. So if those types of missions are coming up soon, getting cheap landing vessels is something that uh, the Union now has access to. The other big competitor to the uh, Bokuta Carryall is the Akron Sentry Rotor, which uh, clocks in at only 22 points per model, but you do have to buy them per package of 4, meaning this unit is a baseline of 44 points. The weapon systems on them are less impressive, rocket pods are definitely worse in my book than Anaheim Auto Cannons, and the Sperry Torpedo Launcher definitely ranks lower than the Aerial Torpedo Pod. But you're getting these more for their utility. They are also slightly more vulnerable, even though their citadel value is slightly higher. There are less critical components that can get destroyed, so the citadel counts as being a bit higher. The Akron Escort Duty can be a thing, so if you can attach your Akrons to different units, but if you're taking them as a unit, you don't really need this rule too much. The AWACS rule, however, can be a reason to choose the Akron Sentry units instead, because this allows weapons with the aerial quality to gain the extreme range quality and the homing quality if the initial target is within 20 inch of an Akron Sentry rotor. And they do get Vanguard as well, so you can get close to your enemy quite quickly, and the aerial units do have a lot of rockets. And then finally, a third option for Mass 1 ships are the Patreon RC-52 Automata, clocking in at 76 points for the two of them. Um, I am mentioning them here because they definitely benefit a lot from the uh, Custodian and Destiny combination I've mentioned earlier, but they are not represented on the sprues that you can buy in those boxes, so these are more for completion uh, in this one. They normally come equipped with dual naval electro cannons. That's really, really good if you're using them uh, for uh, for any pipeworks sort of uh, things. Um, but it uh, it's not always the best thing to have. Um, if you can upgrade them to the new dual magnetic Gatling guns, however, that makes them five points more expensive, but with a new profile from the dual magnetic Gatling gun, like I said, this unit can become very interesting very quickly because it can whittle away uh, the uh, the different the different hull points from many different ships. I mean, getting nine dice in close range with sustained is enough to hit even the armor value of battleships rather easily. 
There's just one downside to using them in this sort of aerial heavy list, and that is the low level strike. Once you go into low level strike, you will lose out on all the different benefits provided uh, by uh, the, the, the aerial repair platform, so be careful using that rule specifically with these Patriot Automatas. Now then, on to the Mass 2 Balloons, the big blimps that come along with them. Um, the first one is the Constellation Attack Airship, which clocks in at 123 points, that hasn't really changed. It comes with a heavy gun battery aimed to the front and then two of those Anaheim auto cannons as well, and heavy broadsides to both sides. They have recently been updated to be Armor 6 Citadel 14, so their defensive stats are actually quite a bit better than most uh, ships, even most air, uh, surface units. And with uh, 5 hull points in the battle ready state and 3 in crippled, these are actually surprisingly tough to take down. Um, in addition, with their heavy gun battery and the Anaheim auto cannons combined with focused gunnery, they do have a decent amount of output. and. Now you can take these Mass 2 blimps into units of 3, uh, rather 4, with 3 additional models. Uh, that means that you can have some very good firepower, although 4 of these guys sit you back near 500 points, so that is a significant investment in almost any fleet. However, with Vanguard and all of the other benefits, along with extra flag barrages and all of these things, uh, I think this is a very good meat and potatoes sort of uh, balloon to build if you're looking at these sprues and going like, oh, what do I make out of all of this? Very safe choice that can combine in almost pretty any force, really. Another really solid option is the Ranger aircraft carrier, clocking in at 121 points. It's got SRS capacity 4 and 2, uh, which is pretty good given how it's Armour 6, Citadel 14 as well, but it has a 4 and 4 hull point distribution, so slightly worse than the Constellation attack airship. However, with a 4 and 2 SRS capacity, these give Roanokes a good run for their money. In fact, um, Except for the fact that you cannot hide these very well because they're aerial units. I would say they're even slightly better than the Roanokes as well in a Union force, so I don't think you can go very wrong by taking Ranger aircraft carrier, even when their points are now updated a bit, quite significantly higher than what they used to be. So yeah, if you want to go for SRS spam along with your destiny, the Ranger definitely can do it because, uh, well, if you take four of these guys, you can expect 16 combined with uh, the eight from the destiny. 24 SRS to play with is quite a significant amount and uh, that would definitely be a viable force. The Rick Public Cloudraker airship clocks in at 122 points. Um, it does have the unexpected arrival rule as well, but there is a danger of overdoing it if you take these, because unexpected arrival really only clocks in at the tail end of turn two, and uh, yeah, if you take a big unit of four of these, you've got um, nearly you know 500 points just sitting there until the end of turn two, and I think that's a bit too much of a heavy investment. However, taking uh, one or two of them can definitely be a good thing because with the combination of strategic withdrawal and ex unexpected arrival, they are incredibly mobile and uh, if you've got like a unit of one of them and you're playing uh, missions where you have to take quadrants for instance, these can be absolutely brilliant. So I wouldn't suggest making a big unit, but one, definitely a worthwhile choice. And then uh, finally, let's talk about the last two build options that you can make out of them. Uh, and I'll just start with the Ticonderoga Assault Airship first. That one clocks in at 124 points. It has that same brilliant uh, defensive profile of Armour 6, Citadel 14, 5 hull points in Battle Ready and 3 in Crippled, as we've seen. But it's a rocket heavy ship. Definitely something you can consider if you're also taking them with Acrons due to that AWACS system. However, the reason why I still have this one in the back of my mind is because they also have the landing vessel rule, which might be playing up very, very soon. And with rocket bar barrage as a rule, they are really making good use of the, that heavy rocket battery supported by a regular rocket battery. 
The only reason why I have a bit more doubt about this assault airship is that rocket batteries tend to be very good at very long ranges and not so good at a point blank range. And uh, given how this also has heavy broadsides, you do want to be close to the enemy as well. So I think this version, the Ticonderoga assault airship, requires a bit more finesse from the player playing with them. Uh, but it's definitely something that can combo into Acrons as well, don't get me wrong. And the last one is probably a case of saving the best for last as well. The Stuart Sentry airship clocks in at 125 points. And let's be honest, this brings nearly all of the utility that the Custodian brings as well. The main downside to the Custodian uh, flagship is that it cannot be everywhere at once. And uh, you can get that same combination with a Stuart Sentry airship if you take a single unit of them. The Stuart uh, Sentry airship also has the same maritime patrol rule that prevents any submarauders from uh, popping up. It also has um, the HEC contractor giving extra defense if you're on the losing side. And it has that same sentinel generator that the custodian has. So if you want to extend the range of that, my mass one ships are very annoying to shoot down now, uh, you can do so with these steward sentry airships. So definitely one of those things that I would almost certainly build if you've got your eye on uh, an HEC contractor list. And as we have uh, seen with uh, the HEC Contractor Battle Fleet, this is actually one of those units that can be spammed into multiple units of one to uh, cover a large part of the board and to make sure that Submarauders are going to have a very hard time getting in there. So even if you're not going for a full aerial list, going for a Custodian and uh, two separate uh, Sentry uh, airships is, I think, something very useful for, uh, for any um, Union ship or any fleet really because these are mercenaries and if you want a hard counter to a lot of uh, submarauders this is it so even if you take away just one thing of this whole union air force it means that i think there's a very strong new contender for super useful mercenary unit custodian two times a steward sentry airship perfectly reasonable and certainly you have maritime patrol across 30 inch of the board if you deploy correctly which is uh, yeah quite a tough thing to face if you your opponent has uh, put a lot of points into uh, submarauders and there we have it i hope you learned something from this uh, video and it was informative to you if it was remember give it a thumbs up that always helps with the youtube algorithm and uh, i hope to see you in the next video where i'll be reviewing the new merchant convoys that were recently sent to me by war cradle studio so i do hope to see you in that next video until then, bye.